with Tommy Wheeldon Jr., the head coach and general manager of Calvary FC. We've been doing this since the foothills, the good old days. I Jeez. can't uh, I can't tell you how proud I am of you and your crew, including obviously the, you know the ownership and Ian Allison and the folks at Spruce Meadows. But uh, from from ideas that felt very like. Yeah, that's ambitious to now year six and the incredible crowds you've continued to grow the last couple seasons coming out of COVID. Um, I, I know we'll get micro, but macro uh, take us back to, I think there was a press conference with some dope MC where you unveiled a logo. <laughs> yeah. uh, could you imagine this being where it's at now? Well, especially, I don't think we, uh, Ian Allison says it a lot, we didn't have pandemic in the risk matrix when you're trying right. to start a new business so to be able to have survived that and now thrive i think our season tickets our, our game day tickets were up about 20 percent in growth from last year so now we're getting back to a place where okay we're growing uh, the league is becoming more established um but we've got to make sure that this stays around for years to come so that our kids the next generation that, that's all they'll ever know in this city that they've got professional hockey they've got professional soccer they got professional basketball and um, it's, you know, that's got to be part of our legacy. Yeah, for sure. I think you've done a great job of that. I know you just did, uh, in the last few weeks, your Calgary minor soccer game, mm -hmm. and it's always great to see the crowds. I know with some of the major, major sports, the ticket price doesn't allow mm -hmm. many young kids to get in. That isn't the case with you guys, nor the surge. Um, and just to see, we know participation is huge in soccer mm -hmm. for boys and girls and adults in this country it's greater than hockey now there's finally a place where everyone can say yeah like i do love the sport i played here's where we go hang and mm -hmm. you guys have done a good job of creating that in probably the most unique atmosphere in the league with what spruce meadows already had yeah. and the natural pitch and just the history that, that comes yeah. with that turf yeah and what um what what linda and the southern family have done with spruce meadows is spectacular and every year you walk through it now and it's something new like they've just built a new stage um, for outdoor concerts, um, you know, there's a restaurant coming uh, for the 50th birthday next year. I mean, there's just every time you go in there, there's a brand new idea. And that family is just incredible in terms of creating a community. And then when you walk through the gates to come to a cavalry game, depending on what experience you want, you can basically get it. If you yeah. want to stand with the foot soldiers or go to a pregame at Kildares or ship an anchor and come in and uh, and hang with them and have the flares and the songs and, and what have you. But if you want to sit with your family in the grandstand, if you want to, you know, have a higher class experience and be in the officers club or the 1975 club, that's for the corporate crew. You can do that. So, mm. you know, my family sit in the 408s and they enjoy it. I mean, on this time of year, they, they get in their suntan because the sun hits you, but it's part of a, a lifestyle that we've created for this city. And it's, uh, yeah, it's enjoyable to watch and, you know, I just um, got gifted um, Scott Strasser's book. Have you heard about it? Here Come the Cavalry? Yes, that's right. He's yeah. uh, published the history of the... Of the Professional uh, soccer yeah. in Calgary. So yeah. it started off with, you know, how we got here, but then he went back and, you know, went into the kickers, the Mustangs, the Storm, and all the owners and the iterations and the people before it that have been, you know, the, that laid the groundwork. And now, and I said to him, that's brilliant. And I'll probably read this at the end of the season because right now you're in business mode and you don't mm -hmm. get to take it in. But when you say questions like that about where we started to where we are, it is humbling. It's awesome. Let's get to the mm -hmm. micro. Uh, mm -hmm. It seems like you're building some nice momentum here. You had a really heated, as always, and great match. It seems like you and Forge bring the best out of mm -hmm. each other. You, you want to do regional rivalries. Oh, this is going to be the team you have rivalry with. But where the cities are is almost secondary. It's it's how competitive the teams are and if there's actually all that little bit of hate or mm -hmm. towards each other. And right from season one of the CPL, it was you guys and Forge. There was no rivalry with Edmonton. You beat them every time you yeah. played them, it seemed. Yeah. Uh, something about Forge and you guys bring the best out in each other. You've been the two best clubs in the league since its uh, inception. And uh, you get a nice draw there, a win in Vancouver last week. Uh, you say it's time to climb. What, what does that mean? Well... <laughs> We, we got a bit of a tough start really with, with the draws, but it was, again, when you put context about, you know, missing our golden boot winner um, in Maya Bevan, who obviously left for personal reasons. Ali Moosey, you know, wasn't fully fit going into the season, uh, had a niggle in preseason, only played four games and then, you know, did a high ankle sprain against Whitecap. So we've missed him now for, you know, 10, 12 games. Um, Sergio Camargo had a good run, but then was out. And then Willie Akio out for the season. And at this time last year, we signed in mid-season when we sold Gote and Tigney. 
and he scored five goals in 10 games. So when you take that productivity out, and I think I said to you before the show, it's like, you know, taking out Goudreau and Kachuk. How do you replace that right away? And mm. fortunately in Tobias Warshevsky, he's been a great signing for us. He's been yeah. class and, you know, he's carried a lot of the load. Fraser Ed's had a good season with contributions and goals. Um, and then what we've asked now is everyone to chip in. So that's what we put up in the locker room is let's uh, let's share the wealth in terms of the goals. But the exciting thing is now is Sergio's fit again. You know, we just signed Lowell Wright that gives us another attacker. Um, Ali Moussi's back, right? So he'll great be back news. in the 18, which is great news. And it's like getting a new signing. So if he has the same impact Willie Akio did at there at the back end of the season, and we've signed the player's player of last year, what a great signing that is for the back end. Brad Camden's coming back in. You know, Eric Cobbs is coming back in. And young Mile Henry is one of the most exciting players I've worked with. So um, they're the things that excite us for the running. And I, I see these guys every day in training. You know, mm -hmm. I see what they can do. And now you add that little bit of a final act. It's going to be exciting running. Had to be some frustration. I know mm -hmm. last year, what was it, five draws in a row or yeah. something like that early on? And you're like, oh, these guys can't buy a break, it feels yeah. like. But you got over it. You got through it. You had a great year. Uh, this year, it felt like the run of draws was even more prominent. Yeah which leads me to believe it would be even more frustrating given all the, the other things that were happening to you. Like I, I know where you're at now and I know you're an ultra positive guy and I like all the arrows in terms of you're getting healthier, you're playing better, you're coming off a really strong performance. Uh, but there had to be some moments a month ago or so, or two months ago where you're just like, man, like how can we be out playing teams and still end up with draws seemingly every week? Uh, yeah, I think, uh, I remember Stephen Hart, former Halifax and uh, Canadian men's national team coach, saying, "Football is a lie, and sometimes yeah. it can be." Is and I say this to my son, who's you know turning fifteen here shortly. Is sometimes you don't always get what you deserve in the game. Yeah. You know, sometimes it takes a mistake. Sometimes it's a bit of magic, and sometimes you blow the doors off and, and totally destroy an opponent. Um, but I think with with this, honestly, it's been the toughest challenge other than the pandemic. I mm -hmm. think that was the greatest thing that, you know, coming through as a coach and a general manager. This has been the toughest challenge because what you're trying to do is still teach the way you want to play because we could have changed and been a bit more pragmatic and said, right, we'll have a low block and counter. That's not our style. We've evolved and we've yeah. be, become more of the uh, protagonist versus the antagonist. There's times and places like we went to BC Place and had to be more of the uh, antagonist and it got us a result there. Mm -hmm. But that's against teams with bigger, better weapons. We just needed our attack back. And I know, having witnessed this, we've won two, three, if you include the, the, the uh, pandemic year, of regular seasons. We know how to do the marathon because things mm -hmm. come good. But all that really matters is if you win the last game of the season. And Forge have done that four times. That's something we want. And last year, when you talk about that, unbelievable performance but it was two bits of magic from them in extra time that took the trophy out of our hands and that stings but it also reminds you that just concentrate on being in the playoffs and finishing strong and i think with the players we have nobody will want to play us we've only lost three games we, yeah. we've got the fewest goals conceded you know if i'm a manager on the other team i would not want to play us because of that and yeah. i think we've shown resilience through tough stretches and that's the sign of a strong club it really is to, to be a team that's on the front foot that has the possession but also allows the least mm. that's that's a formula where if you just get a little more finish you, you should be you know one of the more feared opponents in the league if not the mix in the experience you have your victory over the white caps this year again yeah, which is crazy. incredible yeah. you played uh, orlando in a two-legged uh, yeah. matchup i mean there, there's been some big moments this year i know it's not uh, top of the table at this point but this is a group that probably has some experiential things that could contribute later in the season when you're into some more single game showdowny type situations. We're always strong on the running. And I think that's, uh, that's what I like now is we're in that top four. We've got Ottawa coming up this week that, you know, at their place, we, we, this time last or just at the end of last year, we'd never won there. That was kind of like a bit of a bogey team. Mm. Um, and we had that famous victory and late goals that Willie Akio scored in injury time, but we've played well there over and over, they've just kind of had that, you know, just a moment and they're very good. And they, they're, they're, they're typical, like their parent club, Atletico Madrid, where they can suck the life out of the games. But this year they've gone a little bit more attacking, which is interesting to see, but they're leading. And I know having led the league in many times, you're expected to win. Mm -hmm. And then the tiredness comes. And then when you don't get a result, like they just lost 4-1 to York, suddenly now question marks appear. Whereas we've had question marks all season. Yeah. <laughs> 
it's different for us. We're climbing up versus actually going down. And um, I quite like this matchup coming up this weekend. I love it. Uh, how much fun was Euro and Copa America for you? It was two monster international tournaments. And man, I, I know there was some ticketing and venue issues, but if I'm the South American football association don't don't you want north america's involvement every year it just felt like the tournament scale and scope was bigger now we're in north america so obviously that's that's biased but to include canada mexico Brilliant. usa and three Jamaica, other CONCACAF yeah, teams yeah. just made it bigger Adam higher profile tournament right it did i i, I looked at it and thought because i was talking to oliver minotau who's um obviously just recently left but brazilian and you know <laughs> He always said like the Copa was obviously a good thing to a great competition, but you'd always get the same three or four teams. Mm -hmm. This year kind of added a little bit more with the inclusion of the CONCACAF teams and it made for a bigger, better tournament. Um, I know there was some frustrations, you know, you, you heard Bielsa from Uruguay, like going on about the stadiums. Uh, I think even Jesse Marsh had a bit of a pop at it, but I think it's a dress rehearsal for the World Cup coming up. Totally. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Not that that's the right thing to do, but they've learned from that now uh, as a country. And, you know, for, for us even, uh, you, you've seen the rumors, we'd love at Spruce Meadows to host a World uh, Cup training venue. Sure. You know, so there's plans, like I said, you know, Linda and the Southern family, they they invest in things. We'd love to host teams here as a World Cup training venue. So real, real quick, yeah. we, we know that it's 2026 summer. Hmm. We're, we're talking the biggest World Cup ever, Canada, USA, Mexico, all co-hosting the idea being a country like let's say it's belgium mm, or morocco yeah. or japan someone could come over and make calgary their home base yeah. and train at spruce meadows at your pitch yeah i mean listen there's obviously permission you've got to get from uh, the government um and, and and the city to 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 be able to host this but why not how, how cool would that be to yeah. say right you got belgium the uh, camped out here in calgary you know, there's great um, altitude training mm -hmm. here. We've got grass pitches and you're at an international airport that can get to the games mm -hmm. in Vancouver, Seattle, in California. Um, so why not? And I think that's the, the the big thing with this is we're trying to grow the infrastructure of the game. You know, the Canadian Premier League is trying to create all these stadiums across. But the next layer to that is training venues, high performance centers. Mm -hmm. And then underneath that is your League One that's now the filter into it. And then your youth divisions coming through. So... I think we're kind of finally getting there. You include a U Sports into that. But this training venue, it's started with an idea when we first talked about, you know, what's coming up. Mm -hmm. I do believe regardless of whether we host a team or not, once 2026 hits our shores, the ripple effect, you're seeing it in the States now. Yeah. Since 1994, how the MLS has grown. And it took them, you know, 10 years to get healthy. Mm -hmm. And now you've got Messi there. You've got Apple TV there. It's, it's still a, a, you know, a grown league, but one of the top 10 in the world. I love the Jesse Marsh hire. I know you mm. chatted with the Soccer Canada, yeah. as did a few other CPL coaches yeah. about the position, which is great because I think you need to look at your internal candidates. But it was a very unique resume for Marsh, who had come up through some progressive organizations in Europe and also seemed to have a big chip on his shoulder about how he's treated by Soccer yeah. USA, which I don't mind as well. I think most Canadians can kind of be like, yeah, I don't mind that. The guy's yeah. got a little, he wants to stick it to the, the big neighbors. Tactically, there were questions about whether the team could play his mm -hmm. style of mm -hmm. play, which is a really pressing high, high line. Tempo, fast and like, attacks. You have to run, right? Mm -hmm. And and I think when you'd watched what how they qualified for the World Cup under John Herdman, maybe in hindsight, he didn't use the athletes he had as, as much as he could have in terms of making them run more as athletes. What did you like from Jesse March? What did you expect? And 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 how do you think? we see this team evolve now because it was Herdman to qualify for mm. the world cup fell flat with some flashes of good play. Yeah. Then it's this unstable middle period. He takes over, you have two friendlies mm. in Europe against two of the best clubs in okay. the world, then straight into an Argentina game. I think a lot of people were thinking if you get a result and not even get out of the group, that'd be an okay tournament given he'd only been there a month or so. Instead they run all the way to yeah. a third place game where you outplay Uruguay. Like that's an incredible run. Yeah, listen, uh, I was humbled to be considered um, as a Canadian to, to to lead the men's national team. And and when you look at it, and the reality is, I'd literally just signed my new three-year deal with the Cavs and get the call from our president saying that we've given permission for Kevin Blue and Canada Soccer to approach her and got to the final stages. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, I think they got the right person. Yeah. Um, I think Jesse Marsh should add, he's had high-level experience. He's also now going into it, I haven't had a year to sharpen his axe. Right. And I think that makes a difference when you've got to go into um, a tournament 
they need everything from you and they're draining, you know. So, you know, I talked to Nick Ledgerwood, who's been, you know, in these international places. It's short and sharp. Yeah. John Herdman has taken Canada soccer to a place it's not been to, especially on the men's side now, uh, you know, for a long time, you know, since what was it, the 86 World Cup. Yeah. And made them competitive and probably the most adaptable team. And sometimes there'd be a mid block, sometimes a high press, sometimes build out, sometimes direct, which made them tough to play against in the environments you're playing. I think what we've got with Jesse Marsh is you know what you're going to get and it's going to be hell. Yeah. Right. It's, uh, you know, 90 minutes of hell. And I think it, we, we kind of had a very similar philosophy in 2019 when we wore that jersey. But his is high tempo football. And I think this is the most athletic group of Canadians that the fact was you, when you get Argentina talking about their physical, they're strong to Uruguay, that they're going to hurt to, what was it? Was it the Peru coach that said or Chile coach that said, you know, we're going to expect violence and if we have to use our fists, so be it. Hmm. They were, they already won that game in the press conference. Before it even started. Because suddenly, yeah. guess what? They're throwing out headbutts. They're violent in their tackles. <laughs> so tick to Canada. So for, for these more established countries to start fearing what Canada could bring, I like it. And you said, you now we've got the new partnership of Cornelius and Bombito. That's a great athlete. Yeah. I think Cropo, and we've played against Cropo and Cornelius, you know, and to see how well he played, he kept them in that, right? And you need goal scorers and goalkeepers, and then a bit of a mix of everyone in between. Interestingly, I think it was Tuesday night, uh, Cropo had 16 saves in uh, MLS, <laughs> which I didn't know was a thing that you could do in soccer. There was <laughs> yeah. a, if, uh, anyway, it's it's quite impressive what, there was a lot of emerging stars, Mombito for sure. Mm. Crapo was great. And I think St. Clair is probably a yeah. nice little piece as well, though you only saw him in the third place yeah. game. Schaffelberg uh, from Nashville Brilliant. off the left side at the front. Dynamic. And then up the middle, like Ishmael Kone might have been your breakout star because yeah. he literally ran through one of the best midfields in the world. <laughs> yeah. Well, what, what I like about this is, and that's why Canada's pathway is just so diverse because he was recognized late going into Montreal. I think it was 17, 18 yeah. um, and wasn't with their academy coming through. Nor was Moise Bombito coming Bombito out. Bombito 23 yeah. it was continued to be said by We, we tried by to Marsh. sign him at Cavs. Oh, man. <laughs> coming, coming through NCAA because we know that PDL, NCAA, and right. Canadian, we came across. We had conversations with him. He's like, listen, I'm just going to wait to get drafted. But there was almost, and I'm like, whew, that would have been a, a really good signing. But there's players out there. I firmly believe I get excited trying to discover the next Mo Fazis, Arab and Peppers, Victor Latouris, Gote and Tignes. Canada, if that's just the quarter that we know. Yeah. My goodness. Like what's in Ontario and Quebec is like, there's some unearthed gems there that if you've only got one pro club in there that can only take an X amount of kids sure. in a certain age group. Yeah. I believe in the late bloomers and think there's more to come so we, we just need a bigger funnel and you yeah. talked about it before it was there wasn't a pathway you'd have all mm. these young kids mm. and by the time they're 16 they either are like well i got to move to europe and change my life or it's just like there isn't really spots for me to play and develop at a professional way the cpl solved mm -hmm. that problem you've added another layer in league one around mm. the country um you sports i'd add that sure. in too right uh, and, and which has been around yeah, but yeah. but what we're seeing is the funnel gets bigger and mm -hmm. so you have a chance to develop more athletes and and to be fair 10 15 years ago stark in contrast absolutely and what i see is it's like you know and i was a technical director of youth and i remember having conversations where players would say well we're losing players whether at the time would be to white caps or to over to europe and like coaches would bemoan i'm like and that's, that's our great. job. Yeah. <laughs> well done you. You know, that's our biggest success stories is the players and the people we move on. Um, and, and I try to actually, I said to our youth coach, I used to use an analogy. I said, it's not going to be the trophies that define if you're a successful youth coach. Mm -hmm. It's in 10 years time or 15 years time that you get invited to their wedding because it's their most important people. And if you've impacted a human being's life and they're invited to a wedding, then you know, and we kind of just changed it. And, and trying to move on. But the great thing about now the ecosystem is it is it can loop around. So the players, so like a Gareth Smith Doyle of last year that played for us, you know, he's back playing in League One with Calgary Foothills. Um, we had Mo Al Gandor as a draft. He's back in playing for Calgary Blizzards. So they come back around as players come back through and it heightens the level of competition for that Everywhere. underbelly. Yeah. yeah. So it's the uh, the high tide is all boats, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you wanted to, if someone's like, okay, so like who played for Calvary that's moved along? Like what are, what are the great 
uh, success stories of the organization. Like talk about through the mm. first five seasons, this being six now, where you've sent some young Canadian players and graduated talent. Because I know you've had multiple players go to national team camps. I know yeah. even uh, your current keeper, Marco, yeah, got yeah, a sniff yeah. a few years ago under John Herdman. But there's been, uh, it isn't like, who are these guys? Where are they going? Like you, you're starting to see formal cavalry, former cavalry players on really, really big stages, including the Copa America we just watched. Yeah, so Joel Waterman got to go, um, you know, he was our first sale after year one. Uh, and Montreal, you captained them last night against San Luis in the League's Cup. You look at him, you look at Mo Farsi now, who won the uh, um, MLS Shield with um, Columbus Crew. He's flying. He he was part of our system. Uh, Arab and Pebble, Luton Town, uh, Victor Latore, Ross County in Scotland. So England and Scotland, your last two, yeah. Yeah, and um, Gote and Tigny, we sold him for, well, it's undisclosed, but it was a, and still is, a league record to FC Annecy in uh, League league de in uh in france um and we've had sniffs of a few players here and there like of late but that that's the exciting young canadians are obviously that's what people are buying mm -hmm. yeah that's amazing mm. it's super exciting and with 2026 mm. not that far away what's a reasonable expectation where do you want the program to be when that tournament starts because after watching copa america and those two exhibitions and understanding how early those days were under a new head coach trying to implement a new system working with people he'd only known for weeks not months and years without a huge opportunity to you know create a culture is it, is it crazy to suggest you should be a top 20 team in the world heading into that tournament is the talent oh. level acceptable to expect that well what are we now 40 or something i saw recently yeah that that's got to be the next one, but it's also results in tournaments. So I think the Copa's certainly done you know favors for for rankings. Um, how we do now leading up into the World Cup is is important, but it's with the players we have. I, I love the fact when you see Kone being sold from Watford to Marseille, and especially under De Zerbi, who I think is a phenomenal coach, that okay. his game's all about a double pivot in front of the back line, right? And they're almost like point guards that play just in front of the centre backs that provoke the play. He plays a double pivot for Canada alongside Ustakio. Perfect. And if he can get that into his game in that type of league, brilliant. Then we got to need, right, who's the underbelly? So if they, one of them's injured or suspended or you need freshness because it's high energy, we've got to develop that. If Moise Bombito now goes to, there's a lot of league and sides interest in him, that'd be phenomenal if he sold from uh, Colorado because you're putting them in, and John Urban used to say that, in tier one leagues. Yeah, one of tier those big five yeah. in Europe is huge. You yeah. get them there, then they're, then they're going to grow because Canadians always, you know, and, and any of the Canadians, like your Martin Nash and Nick Ledgewood that went over there, it's always like, why aren't you guys a hockey country? Hmm. Now that narrative is changing because of Alfonso Davies, because of Jonathan David that are going to these leagues and not just playing well, they're playing for big clubs. And play for being the best of their position in certain leagues, right? Real Madrid, you know, was so supposedly after Alfonso. So you start looking at that, you know, it'll be interesting to see where Jonathan David goes next, but even Kyle Lahren scoring in La Liga. You know, th these are big deals. You know, Tejon Buchanan signing for Inter Milan. These are big deals. It'll be interesting now how Jacob Schaffelberg does. Yeah, because he's he was different. great in Copa. Totally different. And he came in on form and he was great in Copa and... If he's playing well, there's also the link now. People see Jesse Marsh that has a name and go, actually, I like the look of that guy. Let's bring him in. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, you've got lots of action coming up. Mm. In Ottawa this mm. weekend, you noted they've been uh, a thorn in your side, but mm. uh, I think your your last few outings have been better against them. You have your, uh, your home on the 10th. I believe it's Halifax for Marvel Superhero Game. Yeah. I think that's a Saturday afternoon. That's going to be a banger. It is. Um Ask you this, because I ask the players, I always try and provoke something with them. I say, if you could have any superpower, yeah. what would it be and why? Oof, this is a uh, superpower. I don't know. Maybe just shut my mouth a little more, Tommy. <laughs> 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 I don't know. That's that, That's definitely was not something I was preparing for today. Uh, do, what would yours be? Teleportation teleportation because you think about it now we live in a big country so pop i'm in i'm in auto bank i'm home you save yeah, time yeah, yeah. also go visit family like for me so so it'd be like last call in calgary but i can transport to hawaii and i've got another like three four yeah. hours before la <laughs> now he's thinking a time travel that'd be fun Do would, you, the would you though it's, it's it's weird one that <laughs> you want to go back and change it and the butterfly effect or you go forward that, it's funny isn't that's it? always tough with time travel yeah. you're like you can't uh you know back to the future i think captured it very poignantly like yeah. it's, you, once you've changed history the future is never the same the butterfly effect indeed 
it's it's a it's a thinker. August uh, ten, we'll get to try so on some. We'll ask some of your uh, your viewers about that because it mm -hmm. is an interesting question. What would your superpower be? I think Dean's Boomer is not here today. I think he would pick uh, just absolute like infinity gravy. You never run out of gravy. <laughs> he loves gravy. <laughs> Rhett would be not aging because he just yeah. moans about how sore his shoulders are yeah. and gets to reminisce about the good old days. Yeah. Uh, it's a good question, though. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we, we can't complain about the hair, Tommy. We got this going no, on. No, no. <laughs> there's, no, there's now a little bit more salt than there is. Uh, wisdom, we uh, call sorry, it. The yes. Nose pepper. But we get it right, right tight by the wisdom in here. See that? The seasoning. <laughs> there you are. It's a little salt in there. Uh, what's the rest of August look like for you? I mean, you, you, you're well, on Ottawa a bit, but you also week, got some yeah, home so games late. That, 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 that's an important game. Actually, it's an important month for us because, yeah. like I said, it's, it is time to climb and we've got to make sure we're in that top four and then start pulling teams closer to us. So we get that opportunity this weekend against Ottawa. Next weekend, we're at home. Um, we've got to start putting more wins on the board because I think we won 10 at home last year. Mm -hmm. We only lost once. But we only won twice. So the rest of them have been ties. So I think yeah. now we're getting healthy and the pitch is getting back a little bit better than what it mm -hmm. was. That's not really helped us at all this year. But then beyond that, we got, we're at York. And uh, York have had a good run under their new manager, Benjamin Mora. But again, we get to bring them back um, to us. So you always want to go and play the teams that are above you because you you can drag them in. And those then when you play the teams like Halifax... Take care of business. Can, yeah, you got to take care of business and and, and keep your insurance because you, you you don't want them to get in the mix. Mm. Um, so it is a good, good month ahead for us. And... Uh, Usually about this summertime, we do go on a bit of a run. I called it, you know, even before the Forge game, I said to the players with the fitness coming back and I could sense something in them. This is our time of year. This is, this mm -hmm. is, this is time to go on a run. It's also the best time of year to get out and uh, check out the games, the weather in the summer, the venue. It's phenomenal. Uh, I mean, you're, you're not sitting in a 30,000 seat CFL stadium with turf. You are in the trees in historic Spruce Meadows on turf. I love the stadium. I love the different... You can go to sit in four different places and four different, totally different game day experiences around uh, at Field, And you guys have done a great job building that. We look forward to seeing you out there this summer. Best of luck. Keep her going. I know uh, we'll have uh, playoffs to talk about again, as we always do, as we roll into the fall. Sounds good. Thanks, mate. Tickets to Ticketmaster and uh, CavsFC.com. Of our content right here on the Flames Nation YouTube page. We had a bunch of great long-form interviews. You can check out some videos we've done as well outside of the studio. And of course, if you want more writing or merchandise stuff, FlamesNation.ca or NationGear.ca. Appreciate you watching.